Hey everybody, Ann here. Today I'm going to do the video that I've been saying I was going to do for a super long time on my dry foods that I buy, stock up on, and prepper food, I guess you could call some of them what I think are good buys and what I think are not so good buys. See that? Behind me I've kind of already showed you, so I'm going to turn this camera around and explain some of the items. Look at my beautiful shelves that I did all by myself. Anyhow, um, so these these are just, you know, herbs that I've dried myself, uh, all different kinds, and I put little um, oxygen absorbers in there. Um, I do like to get this. This is tomato powder, and it is instead of, like, tomato paste or tomato sauce in cans. I don't like cans because they take up space, they don't burn well, um, and I just don't like cans if I can avoid them. I also get tomato flakes dehydrated, and these are great. You just throw them in a dish, and hopefully someday after I use all these up and if I can grow my own tomatoes, hopefully I will be able to uh, dehydrate my own tomatoes. Here is dehydrated spinach flakes. Now I don't really need to use these too much during the summertime because I've got plenty of wild greens but whenever I want some greens in there for nutrition and flavor I will do that. I also love these are freeze-dried green beans and they are much better than dehydrated green beans. The dehydrated green beans just they aren't as good. Uh, their flavor is not as good and they get kind of gummy. Um, when you try and rehydrate them. I use an awful lot of dried carrots. These are dehydrated carrots and they rehydrate just fine. Um, they go easily in stews. You don't have to use a whole can. You can just throw in a handful. So I love that. This is freeze-dyed cauliflower pearls. And the freeze-dried version is much, much better than any kind of dehydrated version. I've never tried a dehydrated version, but I don't assume it would work very well. And I've got more of Mary's Jam. I've only got four more left. Um, back here is freeze-dried sweet corn. I just put it in this big thing because I go through a lot of freeze-dried sweet corn. Uh, freeze-dried broccoli. I use that quite a bit. Uh, these are dehydrated sweet potatoes. I use an awful lot of those too. They do rehydrate just fine. They're great in stews. Uh, peas. <laughs> D D uh, these are freeze-dried sweet peas. I always have those on hand. Um, these are dehydrated jalapeno peppers. Hopefully, if I have a good crop this year, I won't have to buy these anymore and I can dehydrate my own jalapeno peppers. And bell peppers, um, the same thing. I, I hope to be able to dehydrate my own bell peppers. And I just bought the huge can from Augustin Farms because the price came down again. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. Oh, what else we got back here? I've never tried these dehydrated refried beans, um, but I'm hoping to use them at some point very soon. Oh, I have a big, big jar, number 10 jar of, these are like minced onion flakes, um, but I don't like to keep getting into the big jar, so I just take out a small jar and just get into this and put an oxygen absorber in it and use that quite a bit. Back here, oh, these are potatoes. Yes, diced potatoes. Um, I do like them, and I use them in soups and stews, stuff like that. What is this? Oh, sliced garlic. Yep. I use the sliced garlic and it is great. I like to get the quinoa in um, this kind of thing and I just take out a little scoop. I've got a little scooper in there and add it to dishes sometimes. This is couscous, same thing. Um, it didn't come in this jar, it just came in a, a plastic packet. Um, but I put it in this because I emptied out something else and I just scoop it out sometimes. Of course, I have a big thing of sugar. Um, a big gallon jug of sugar and like the onions and whatnot. Um, I don't like to keep dipping into the big gallon, so I just put enough in here. There's a little scooper in there, and I just take out what I need every once in a while. There is an oxygen absorber in there as well. Um, brown sugar, same here. I've got a big thing of it, but I just put it in these little jars. 
as well as salt. I've got a gallon jug of salt and I just put an oxygen absorber in here. I just take out enough for this jar so I don't have to keep dipping into it over and over and over again. And my Jiffy Mix. Uh, once I use this, I don't know if I'll get Jiffy Mix, I will probably put something else in here and just keep flour in one of my big buckets. This is where I keep the rest of my big stuff. Um, and it's a mess in there. So I'm just gonna pull them out and go sit down and show you what they are. It's kind of dark in here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this because this is really heavy. I recently bought this. It was almost half price. It is 24 pounds of brown rice and I just take a little bit out and put it in another jug. Um, this has oxygen absorbers in it, but here, let me show you what I put it in. I put it in one of these, and there's a couple oxygen absorbers in it so that I don't have to keep dipping into the 25-pound bucket. Um, I also get bulk macaroni, and um, I don't have a big bucket of that yet, but I will eventually and I just keep those both there because I am constantly dipping into them. Yes, oxygen absorbers in each one, and I just scoop them out with those big scoops in there. Now on to the big buckets that I've got that I cannot recommend one single one of them, but they do come in a very sturdy bucket. You'll notice everything is covered in dust right now because of the wood burning stove, and I have not, I have not dusted in two or three weeks, and so everything's got a nice layer of dust on it. Um, the first one that I got was this. <laughs> I've put powdered milk in it now. This was the Augustine Farms Lunch and Dinner Pail. It includes two pouches of elbow macaroni, one pouch cheese powder, and I keep cheese powder up on the shelf. I didn't show it to you. It's back behind something. Um, and there's probably a couple other things I didn't show you too, but that's okay. Uh, you get the idea. Um, it's just basically like uh, the cheese powder that you put in macaroni and cheese to make it cheesy. Um, two pouches creamy potato soup, one pouch cheesy broccoli rice, uh, one pouch chicken flavored noodle soup, one pouch corn chowder. Um, and honestly, for the money, and I'm going to put the money, the price up there, uh, what you're going to have to pay for it now. Of course, I bought it on sale months ago. Um, I personally did not care for any of the stuff in there. I particularly did not like the corn chowder. Um, you know, the stuff tasted okay, but for how much you're paying, um, it just didn't. It just didn't seem like a wise choice for me. So I won't be buying it, it again. Um, and honestly, they come in big pouches, and so there's really no way. I mean, you could like roll it up and clip it, or you could put it in a jar or whatever, but that's not really my thing. I would rather it just come in a smaller, reclosable package um, that you can go into and use several times. But this this package here is mainly meant to take one of the packages out, put hot water in the whole thing, and then just serve it all. So for me, that's not a good thing. I think even for a family, um, this is not a good buy because you can buy the little... Uh, canisters like I buy and just use a little bit of at a time and it's a much better buy. Plus, I don't think the flavors of the stuff that was in here was really all that great. So, but, but these buckets, they are awesome. They've got a really tight seal on them. I have to use one of those bucket openers, openers to get it up. Um, so they really do keep things very fresh for a long time. So, um, I'm still using them. Like this one, I put my powdered milk in. Um, that may change eventually. But, if you're looking to get stuff for quick meals, you know, survival meals or whatever, get yourself a good bucket with a good sealing lid. Get yourself a Mylar bag and just put things like this down in it. These cost not even a dollar. This one right here, it's pretty good. It was like... 89 cents or something um, and if you didn't want to store it in here you could take it put it in a larger Ziploc bag put it down into the bucket and um, then you won't have to worry about this cardboard degrade because sometimes if you're in a um, humid area like I am this cardboard will start breaking down if it's too humid but I found that tasty it was just as tasty if not tastier than the other stuff that Augustine Farms is charging an arm and a leg for so I mean it's trendy to buy these Patriot you know 
prepper foods, but the truth be told, um, I don't think they're all that great. You can go to the dollar store and get stuff that's just as good, but you have to package it correctly for long-term storage. Um, another one that I like, under a buck, yes, Alfredo. I put beef in it. I put chicken in it. Um, oh, here's a couple others that I really love. Um, this kind of uh, stroganoff, I've used this before. It's very tasty, under a dollar. Lasagna, just like the one Augustine Farms does. Um, it's a smaller serving. You don't have to, you know, make uh, a meal for like 10 people. And this is great, under a dollar. Um, also, I will look for, now when you buy Hamburger Helper, sometimes it's a little bit pricey because, you know, it's ham Hamburger Helper, it's a brand name. But I found these on sale for 63 cents. So I am always looking for bargains. It's in a very slim package, minimal um, packaging. So I'm going to try this. I'm sure it's going to be good. Good. Um, this one, the chicken, uh, 63 cents. And this one, I'm really looking forward to hash browns. Now, if you're going camping, like I said, you're not going to be able to bring one of these big buckets around. Um, but, you know, if you were just bringing the packets, you could very well just put these in a Ziploc bag and bring it with you if you didn't have time to store it in the box. But I'm all for bargains, and honestly, uh, I, I just don't think these big buckets of things, um, survival prepper food, are good ideas. You can piece together things and um, have a much better uh, long-term storage pantry than just paying an arm and a leg. Okay, so the next bucket I have is this. I've got shelf-stable meats in it now that come in like packets, like my, my bacon and stuff like that. Um, here, let me just show you. Oh, see, these are hard to get open. Oh, I don't have my bucket opener right handy. See, see what I mean? These little buckets are really good. Oh, so that's a bonus. But you shouldn't have to pay 90 bucks for a good bucket. Okay, yeah, I keep things like this bacon in it. Um, I also keep these packets of chicken in it. I'm running low, but that's okay because Miss Mary sent me a whole bunch of shelf-stable meats. And in this, this was their vegetable um, combination. And I'll put the, the price up there for you. It came with one pouch of freeze-dried diced potatoes, one pouch of freeze-dried uh, diced peas, one pouch freeze-dried broccoli, um, one pouch freeze-dried sweet corn, one pouch freeze-dried green beans, and one pouch dehydrated chopped onions. Now, um, all of the vegetables in here were fine, especially the sweet corn because I've still got some of that up there. They all tasted just fine, but for the price, it just wasn't worth it. Um, because you, when you open the packet, it's, it's not a multi-serve packet. They just expect you to open it up pour the water in and, and then use it all at once. That's not how I operate, so that is why I like the smaller canisters that I have up on my shelf, because they cost less. You can get exactly the stuff that you want, and um, it's just more cost effective. But, like I said, you get, a, you get a big nice bucket with it, so there's that. This was probably my least favorite from Augustine Farms, and that is their freeze-dried fruit pail. I store pasta in it now, like spaghetti and lasagna in the boxes, because like I said, I live in a humid environment, so I've noticed when I put them in my pantry or on a shelf or something, um, the cardboard, if I haven't used it um, within a few months, the cardboard starts kind of degrading, so I put them inside this big bucket. I put a few oxygen absorbers in it, and they stay nice and dry, and they will last so much longer. Well, anyhow, so this contained... One pouch of each of these, strawberries, bananas, um, apple slices, raspberries, blueberries, and Spliffy Whip. I haven't used the Spliffy Whip yet, but um, I think that's probably going to be pretty good. Now, I really didn't care for any of these fruits except for the bananas and the apples. Everything else didn't taste right to me. Um, I don't know. I, I just really didn't like it very much. So, yeah, there's the price. There's no sense in spending that much money for fruit that you don't even like or that you might not even use. I'm going to show you the containers that I like. I keep my sugar and uh, cornmeal and stuff like that in. And again, very dusty. Everything is dusty. 
Um, I get like protein powder in this size thing. I think it holds a gallon. And it's got a pretty good sealing lid on it. Not the best, not as good as glass, but I put sugar in these. I could put uh, cornmeal in these. And um, I may put flour in these, I'm not sure. This isn't a ton of salt, but it's a good bit of salt. Um, and plus I have that other jar up there. And this is what I keep this in. It's in a nice sealed jar, has oxygen absorbers in it, so it's gonna last longer. Now, for me, this is a big thing of olive oil. Yeah, it is. Uh, I buy the bigger one, it's more cost effective, and I always keep olive oil around, as well as I will keep a couple of these around. I've used quite a bit of it. Um, just plain old canola oil. I like canola oil. And the bigger jug is more cost effective, so that's what I get. Okay, now, more shelf-stable meats. Um, I know I would already shown you this. Um, Augustine Farms uh, freeze-dried chicken and it is delicious. Now I got this almost half off. Um, I'll put the price for what they're asking now for it and I won't buy this kind of stuff unless it's on sale or it's come down in price because normally this stuff, I also buy it from Mountain House on Amazon and um, sometimes their price is down where Augustine Farms is up and then sometimes it switches around. Um, you can get these for about 90 bucks on Amazon, um, you know, both of them. They're, they're pretty expensive. Sometimes this comes down to about 60. I think when I got it, it was on sale for like 40 something. I'm not sure, maybe 50, but um, this lasts me a long time. You just need a couple, two, three handfuls for a dish. For me, if it's just for me and I'm not cooking for the puppies, one handful of this stuff in a dish. Um, and I don't pre-hydrate it, I just add extra fluid to the stew or soup or whatever it is I'm making and just let it cook all, all along with everything else. Diced beef. This is Mountain House. And once again, I got this on sale. It, uh, I think if you get it now, I don't even think it's available right now, but um, I do like to get this um, freeze-dried diced beef. It's great. You put it in a soup, put it in a stew, put it in chili. Um, you can even make tacos with it, add the seasonings and whatnot. Um, it's pretty pricey though, so I don't suggest paying full price for it. I would wait until it goes on sale. And um, Augustine Farms also sells this. So um, I've got a, like an Amazon storefront where I suggest things for people. If you buy something through my store, I get a little bit of um, credit, you know, a little bit of money for it for referring you. So that's good. Um, but this is good and it's tasty. It is expensive. So wait until it goes on sale. You're going to pay $90, $100 for a thing this size right now, and to me that's not worth it. Um, so wait till it comes down to 50 60 bucks, and then, because this is a lot of meat, and it's, I mean, I've had this, I think I've probably had this for six or eight months, and I still have half a thing left. So that is also very awesome. I just made some of these last night. Oxen Farms Black Bean Burger Mix. Um, this stuff, I love it. I do. I really love it. They're veggie burgers. They are totally veggie burgers. And last night I made them with a uh, little bacon over the top. I threw some of my uh, mozzarella cheese in it, and I'll show you that in a bit. And um, put them over Hawaiian buns, you know, like little sliders. And it was just really good. So I like this. And I'm not going vegan or anything, but if you're vegan, yeah, definitely check this out. This right here, when I bought it, it was lower in price. I, again, I'll put the current price up, but I bought it for, oh, it was probably, um, I don't know, 30, 40% off when I bought it. Now, I have bought this, I think, almost a year, and I've been getting cheese out of it. And the cheese that is inside here, it comes with oxygen absorbers. Um, the cheese is still good. There's no mold. There's no problems with it. Um, and I've, I've just been using it for almost a year, and it still has been staying good in this can. Um, now, it comes dehydrated. They say to rehydrate it. I don't. I just throw it in a dish, add a little bit of extra water, and there you go. Now, if you're going to sprinkle it on tacos, yeah, you may want to, you know, rehydrate a little bit, but I normally just put it in stuff. Also, I have their mozzarella cheese. Also delicious. It is perfect. I uh, spread it in lasagna. And again, I don't rehydrate. I just put it in the dish, add a little extra fluid, and it works out perfectly. It gets all stringy. 
I like it. Uh, was expensive. It is expensive, but I got it. Like I said, it was on sale. So that's, I wait for something goes on sale before I will get it. Here's the big can of onions. And I bought this almost a year ago, and it's still good. Uh, oxygen absorbers inside. There's nothing wrong with the onions that are inside here, and they are still tasty, crispy, crunchy. Um, you can rehydrate them if you want to, but I don't. And so, yeah, this is one of the things I just take a little bit out and put in that jar so that I don't have to keep getting in and out of this one. I also buy their celery. Uh, this is dehydrated. It's not freeze-dried. Um, it is a big, huge can, and you can just take like a handful out, throw it in a dish, and voila, it's wonderful. Um, you can rehydrate it, but I don't. I just throw it in whatever I'm going to be making for the day, and there you go. Um, the thing about it is, is um, they're not big pieces, so when it rehydrates, it's not going to be like your typical slice of celery that you might see. It's, mmm, ooh, it smells wonderful, too. They're, they're kind of like flakes, but it does add a flavor, so that's what I'm going for. Now, remember when I was complaining about um, the dehydrated yeah, uh, red and green bell peppers that I had put in my cart, and um, they immediately went up in price before I could even pay for them? Well, they went back down in price. I had been checking every single day, um, and so August and Farms had them listed again, they had them in their inventory, and I got this at basically almost half price. Um, so this is another thing. All of this stuff is in my Amazon store. You can go check it out. Um, but I would wait until stuff goes on sale before you buy it. So this is a big, huge can. I haven't even opened it yet because I still have some in, in that thing up there. Um, but I'm, I'm just very stoked that I got this because I use a lot of these uh, not freeze-dried, but dehydrated bell peppers. So I'm very happy I found this. It was affordable and so awesome. Another thing that I get, and I have two forms of butter. This is one of them. <laughs> it's by Hoosier Hill Farm, real butter powder, and I love this stuff. Um, of course, like they say, you can rehydrate it to make it like butter, actual melted butter, but I don't, I just throw it in a dish or whatever. I mean, if I need to saute something, I will, I'll rehydrate it a little bit and throw it in a pan. Um, but I only have to take out a little bit at a time. It doesn't have to be refrigerated and the flavor is just really good. Um, so yeah, I kind of like that. I use a lot of ghee. I love ghee. It's clarified butter. You can make ghee out of butter. There's videos of it up on the internet, so go check them out. Uh, you basically just got to cook off the, um, you know, the fluid and different stuff. And you don't have to refrigerate this either. Um, you can just keep it on your shelf and you got butter. Love it. Love the flavor. I also get sour cream powder also from Hoosier, Hoosier Hill Farms. Um, I love this stuff. I've put it in multiple different dishes. I especially like to put it in um, homemade potato soup. It adds that extra, I don't know, just whatever. And you can actually make like a sour cream sort of stuff out of it. Um, so yeah, I do like this. I like it very much. So in closing, I would steer you away from the big buckets, the 24-hour emergency food prep, the three days, uh, one person bucket or, you know, whatever, because those are going to cost you a lot of money. And you can create your own buckets yourself by getting a good bucket with a good lid. Now, those are those are very pricey. Um, the Gamma Seal buckets, I don't know how much they cost. I may, I may look it up and then put the price up there for you for, for just one bucket. But for long-term food storage, they're great. And also, you can get the Mylar bags that are sealable. That will keep your food even longer. And, um, you know, just get yourself some dollar store boxes of things. Now, you may not like the, the flavor of those. Me, I don't have a cultured palate. I mean, I will eat anything because I look at food as nutrition. I, I don't look at it as a reward, although I do reward myself sometimes with food. But um, at the end of the day, when you're thinking about prepping and survival and that sort of thing, you're not talking, you're not thinking about... Um, you know, rewarding yourself. You're just thinking about what kind of food you need to have to keep yourself um, alive and, you know, the nutrition that you need to put in your body. So just 
you know, if you want to prep, that's great. But just don't go crazy buying a, a bunch of trendy food um, because I don't think it's worth it. I think that you can buy more cost-effective things and take measures on your own to preserve those foods or to keep them um, in the state that they need to be for longer periods of time just by um, taking certain measures like getting a nice ceiling bucket and Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers and all those sorts of things. And of course there's canning, there's pressure canning, there's dehydrating things on your own. Um, I don't have a dehydrator yet, but I might, I might get one. I just don't know how taxing it would be on my solar, but I could run it on the generator. But I have dehydrated my own mushrooms out in the sunshine with just screens putting over them. So anyhow, um, I hope this was helpful. I know I was talking very fast and I sometimes stutter when I start talking too fast. But um, just be careful what you buy. Uh, and look for sales and don't fall for the prepper food hype because to me it's just kind of um, overpriced and not very tasty. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.